Hello everybody, I am Another Game Done, and this is my beginner's guide to Oninaki on the Nintendo Switch. Oninaki tells a dark and compelling story about life, regrets, and passing over to the next life through reincarnation. It is heavily driven by its dark and serious story, but also includes great gameplay. Oninaki is an anime, hack and slash, action RPG with a great story that will tug at your heartstrings and make you think about life in a different way. It did, at least with me. It was released in 2019 for PlayStation 4, PC, and Nintendo Switch, and was developed by Tokyo RPG Factory and published by Square Enix. If you get the chance, I recommend buying this game to experience its story for yourself. I picked it up on sale on the Nintendo eShop for a very reasonable price. If you don't already know, I have my playthrough with commentary of Oninaki recorded on my channel, if you'd rather just watch me play it instead. It is a great game though, so I highly recommend doing both. You begin the game playing as Kagachi a level-headed young man who lost his parents at an early age. As an adult, he serves as a watcher who can commune with spirits who have lost their way in their journey to reincarnation. His purpose is to rescue these lost souls and help them cross over peacefully to their next life. Enemies. When you begin fighting enemies, there are no active respawns. If you continue to fight, you will eventually clear out the entire map of enemies. Instead, they will only respawn once you leave and re-enter the given area. This is done typically by following the story and fast traveling back to places you have visited via waystones. Fast traveling to respawn enemies is the best way to level up your character. Note that your character and your demons level independently from each other. Healing there are at least three different ways to heal yourself in Oninaki. First, you can simply approach a waystone, and it will heal you instantly. If you are away from a waystone, there are two additional options. You can stand still with your sword sheathed, and you will passively gain health at a slow rate. If you are in battle and need a quicker solution, you can use a healing incense, which is collected during gameplay, that can be used at any given time. Be careful though, as you can only hold 5 healing incense at any time in the early game. It is recommended to save your healing incense for boss battles. Manifest and Affinity Affinity is displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. As you battle, it increases. Once you hit 100% affinity, your attack is raised. At this time, you can activate Manifest, which will increase all your stats for a limited time, and you basically go Rage Mode on your enemies. If you allow your affinity to surpass 150%, it will decrease your defenses. So be watchful and strategic with your affinity and uses of Manifest. Waystones. Waystones are your home away from home. These are the heart of survival and provides many benefits to you during gameplay. When entering its protective shield, it will instantly heal you while resetting enemy positions on the map. Note that enemies are not healed when reset this way. Waystones even allow you to change the game's difficulty at any time. If you just can't beat a boss, and don't feel like grinding to level up your character, then just change the game's difficulty. Skill Trees The skill tree is a visual depiction of each demon soul. This is where you unlock new abilities to aid you in battle. You can also unlock perks and other upgrades for your demons to become an even more deadly combatant to your enemies. The Living World and the Beyond you will find that enemies live in both the living world and the beyond. This is the darker blue shade of the game, and that both sets of enemies can be cleared out to gain XP. There are chests with items you can find during gameplay, but they can only be found in the beyond. Side note, you can destroy boxes and crates, but only in the living world. There's no benefit to destroying boxes that I could see, but it's just a fun thing to do. 
You and your enemies share stat changes in each world type. In the beyond, you will come across sections of the map where you are veil blind, meaning you literally cannot see anything except for the outlines of the enemies. When entering this section of veil blindness, you walk slower, you are unable to fight in any way, and will take lethal damage immediately when struck by your enemies. Sight Stealers the only way to lift this curse of Veil Blindness is to find and destroy a Sight Stealer in the living world. These creatures are typically mini-bosses with higher health and heavier attacks, so be careful when taking them on. Once defeated, they will emit a portal leading back into the beyond, where you will pass through and break the darkness caused by Veil Blindness. Lastly, I always wonder if I can fall off ledges or cliffs, and if there are any adverse results from it. For this game, you will not fall off cliffs. However, you can fall off ledges that would drop you onto lower levels of the map. So go right on ahead and take the shortcut off the ledge instead of taking the long way around. And you can go right up to the edge of the cliff and you won't fall off. I promise. With the tips I've shown you in this video, you should have no problem getting into this game and enjoying it right away. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope I have helped you to understand a few of the mechanics found in Oninaki. Please check out my playthrough of the game, as I am thoroughly enjoying playing it. Yeah, we're doing much better this time. Ow, that hurt. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.